And I believe this last lecture series may have been inspired by Dr. Randy Pouch. He was a computer science professor at Carnegie Mellon. Probably a lot of you have heard of him. He had pancreatic cancer and found out basically he had a few months left to live. And he was already scheduled to give this lecture as a last lecture, and then they renamed it. But it was his last lecture. And it's on YouTube. If you ever want to go and watch it, it's very inspiring. And about 14 days ago, SOAP sent out emails to all the faculty and asked, would you be interested in giving the last lecture? You know, if you had a captive audience and could relay all this wisdom, would you be interested? I was like, heck yeah, captive audience, sure. So we're here tonight for my last lecture, things that they don't teach you in school, but they probably would have been a good idea to learn before you made those mistakes. So you look around you and you're here in school, and maybe you think everybody's got it together, cool cars, and they just, they've got it together. But what you probably don't realize is not everybody's got it together. Most everybody is as confused as you are. They have backgrounds behind them, or maybe they struggled in school, or they've got family issues. And just by looking at people, you can't necessarily tell who's got it together, right? Most of you are struggling. So as you go through life, you might be, you know, lucky enough to find somebody who actually does have it all together. Most of the time you won't. This was one person I met who had it all together. This is Lorena. I met her when I was 12 years old. I was a new kid in school, new kid in town. First day of school, I have to walk into this classroom. It's already in session, everybody's doing their work, and they just kind of hand me a book and I've got to figure everything out. So if you remember back, you know, ever being the new kid in school or being a teenager, the last thing you want is everybody to look at you. It's like, oh my God, I'm a freak. Well, I'm in the classroom, right? You all know this. I'm in the classroom, I sit down, I'm you know, trying to figure out what the class is doing, and as soon as the teacher's done you know, the lecture part, they give us a few minutes, you know, just kind of socialize, and this girl's sitting next to me. And she you know, starts talking to me, oh, who are you? You're new here, you know, what are you into? Do you play sports, you music, this and that? You know, and of course, I'm terrified. It's like, I don't know who this person is. I'm, I'm brand new here. So but I'm trying to be polite, and I think she could tell I was nervous. Because after she gets through grilling me, she goes and points around the classroom and says, you see those kids over there? So, yeah. Well, that one's a jock. That one's a bully. Those two girls over there, those are the mean girls. This one over here, they're really into music. And she went around the whole room and told me exactly who was who, what the groups were like, who you could be friends with if you're in one group or the other group. And by the time she got through, I was like, oh my god, you know, there's the pressure. Which group am I going to be a member of? And so she looks at me and she says, you know, wh where do you think you're going to fit in? Are you an athlete? Are you an artist? You know, where do you want to be? And this is coming from a 12-year-old girl. <laughs> I was like, wow. So I asked her, I said, well, what group are you in? And uh, she says, well, I'm not in any group. I don't you're not in a group. She says, well, I'm friends with, with those three athletes, and I'm friends with that kid from drama, and I'm friends with those musicians. And I don't mess with mean girls, because they'll pick on anybody. And she just goes around. I said, why aren't you in a group? She says, because I don't want anyone telling me who I can or can't be friends with. And so she gets through, and she says, well, so who are you going to be friends with? And I look at her, and I said, you. you know? I was like, here's somebody who's brave enough at 12 to say, I'm going to be my own person. 35 years later, we're still friends. So I was like, oh. So when you're going through your college experience, you're going to meet some people. <coughs> Some will have it all together and some won't. But you won't know until you get to know them and you start talking to them. And don't just judge them by what you see on the surface. So, let me get my next one here. Okay. That said, looks can be deceiving. <coughs> You've all met people. You know, they have nice hair and nice clothes and you, you have certain thoughts. I like this picture from the Breakfast Club. <laughs> you can see the archetypes. You got the bad boy, you got the jock, you got the goth girl, you got the rich girl, you got the nerd. And people have these perceptions of you according to how you dress, how you carry yourself. And it might be completely false, but this is what they're reading when they look at you. So let's take an example. There's a cute girl. You know, she's in school, she's pretty, she's moody. Who would want to be her? Well, her boyfriend's a vampire, her best friend's a werewolf, and she's got all manner of weird people chasing after her, trying to kill her. Her life's not all that. You wouldn't know that just by looking at her, right? Let's take this guy. Oh, he's a hottie. He's in school. He's also an alien, and he's on a hit list. 
sucks to be him, right? <laughs> he looks like he's got it all together. He looks cool. But you just don't know. So that's kind of unfair. They're fictional characters, right? Let's take somebody a little bit more real. And I say a little bit more real because they're celebrities. So hot-looking guys. They're rich. They're famous. They're in a hit movie. And this one over here was up for an Oscar. They've got it made, right? Nothing could go wrong with them. They've got charmed lives. They've never made mistakes. Everything's cool. What can you tell just by looking at these guys? Could you tell that this one was a high school dropout? Could you tell that this one was a high school dropout? Could you tell that this one is a former Olympic champion for Britain? People have histories that you have no idea until you get to know them. So don't assume just because somebody's got the right clothes or the right hair that they've got it all together. There might be somebody who's just a gem out there that you're going to meet while you're in college and they're going to be lifelong friends. Okay? Okay. Next thing. Let's take this kid for example. High school graduation. He's got his whole life in front of him. He's going to go off to college. He could be anybody. This could be awesome for him, right? So he gets to college. And maybe, you know, he goes out and he parties. Or maybe he stays up late playing video games and flunks the first semester. You don't know, right? But what happens if he gets in trouble? Is it the end of the world? You know? When you get to college, things are going to happen, right? You might make mistakes. You might get in trouble. But it's not really going to, you know, it's not the end of the world. When these things happen to you, this is just an infinitesimal amount of time in your life. You know, if you look at the span of your life, 60, 70 years, if you're lucky, maybe longer, this one instant, you know, whatever goes wrong, you just feel so horrible. It's like, oh my God, it's the end of the world. My parents are going to kill me. I'm going to get kicked out of school. Whatever it is, it'll pass. You can get past this. You can recover from it. You can go on and be someone special. This doesn't have to limit what your future is going to be. And this kid, he did okay. He became a billionaire. Doesn't mean you have to have that pressure. You might not be billionaires, but things can happen. You can recover from mistakes. Okay? The next thing you need to know is be careful what you memorialize. <laughs> All right? Now, in my generation, which is pre-internet, the biggest thing we had to worry about was our yearbook pictures. All right? We'd look squirrely, our face would break out, we'd have the latest hairstyle, which actually was really bizarre. But when we did the yearbooks, nobody would see them. They were in print, they were put on a shelf, and other than your family and friends are coming out at a high school reunion and they pull the photo out, no one's going to see it. Your future employer's not going to see it. Your spouse isn't going to see it unless you've got it sitting on the shelf. So you're safe. The problem is, these days, it's not just the yearbooks. You guys have the internet, right? So, unless you become famous, your yearbook picture won't be out there unless you put it online, right? So look at this guy. He doesn't look too bad, you know? This comes up because he's a celebrity. All right. Yeah, see? People change. Here's the next one. Everyone knows him. I'm obviously the name's there. At least his face wasn't broken out. He's got the bad hair. The face is okay, right? I'm just telling you, how you look, how you behave, how you dress, who you are right now, that's not necessarily who you're going to be when you, you know, finish growing up and become an adult. Yeah. Who would be friends with her, right? <laughs> it would now. <laughs> okay, so. You don't always oh, have the greatest oh. taste and style when you're a kid. And people kind of expect that. You're going to look goofy, you're going to change, you're going to come into your own, and you're going to mature. And if you get better as you go along, or, or at least stay the same, okay. The problem will be that if you're perfectly normal now, and then you change into something bizarre, people are going to say, what the heck happened to you in college, you know? <laughs> Snip dog. Perfectly respectable young man in that yearbook photo. Now look at him. So, just understand, your college years, you're going to change what seems really cool and awesome to you right now might not be later, and it's okay, because probably most of you aren't going to be celebrities. Now, to be fair, I was going to show you my yearbook photo, but honestly, after two days of digging around my attic, I could not find it at all. 
And I was actually one of those normal looking kids. Nothing bizarre, but pretty good. So the closest I could do is find bad photos for you. <laughs> you know, teenage years, and there you got junior prom, complete with the powder blue tux. I mean, it doesn't get any worse than that. And my grandmother picked out my dress, okay? You know? you, we will all have humiliating moments. We will have memories that you just cringe and say, oh my God, I that. I haven't taken a photo of that. But, you know, it happens. We all have bad photos. The age of the internet, getting back to that, you guys, your images are plastered all over from the very beginning. Poor Justin Bieber, this hairstyle, that, that is a telltale sign for an old guy going bald. This is the ultimate comb over, right? Whoever told Justin that was a good look must have really hated him. <laughs> he's got to live with that for the rest of his life when he's an adult, and they're going to pull out that photo anytime he does anything and say, oh, Justin Bieber. Luckily, he, he's learning, okay? He is cleaning up and getting a little bit better. But that said, how many of you really understand how the internet works? Do you understand that the internet is cached, it's archived, it's copied, and it's saved forever? There are places you can go online right now and say, I would like to pull up this address from 2002. Can you bring me all the photos that were online at that time? That means that anything you guys have published, even if you've deleted it off your Facebook page, somewhere it's cached. Somebody can find it. So, as a lesson to you guys, do not print anything scandalous, obscene, or illegal <laughs> about yourselves. Think about this. If the internet is cached, and about 10, 15 years from now, you're going up for a really big promotion, or you want to get security clearance, and somebody finds old photos of you, your boss might look and think, I don't know if that person's judgment is all that. Okay? You've got to be careful what you put out there. And let's, let's take another example. Let's say 20 years from now, you've got a teenager that you just busted for doing drugs or smoking pot, and you're trying to teach them that's a bad thing to do. You really shouldn't do that. You're going to mess up your lives. And then they go online and say, oh, yeah, Dad, Mom, guess what I found? I said, you guys with a bomb. Okay? <laughs> this will come back to haunt you one way or another. All right? You can show pictures to your friends, but don't put them on the internet. You guys, you know, you, you grew up with this, this whole thing, and it seems safe to you, but you don't know what the long-term ramifications are going to be. So be careful. Don't compound your problems. Don't lay things out in front of you. Okay, the next thing that they don't really teach you in school, and a lot of you think, oh, I've, I've got that. I understand it. How many of you really understand how to be a friend? Okay, you've got friends, you hang out with them, you're social. But how many of you have ever had a time when you had to take keys away from a friend because they were drunk and they got really ticked off at you, right? Or what if, you know, during college you have a friend who gets dumped and they're pregnant and they don't know what to do and maybe they want to have an abortion and you're really against an abortion. Do you go with being against abortion or do you help your friend through a really difficult time? Sometimes you have to put your own feelings aside and be there for that person regardless of how hard it is for you, right? How many of you have had friends who've gone off in the military? They've gone to Iraq or they've gone to Afghanistan and all of a sudden your idyllic world where you're young and you're immortal and nothing bad ever happens, you've got friends who could die at any minute. This time period in your life, you're going to go through a lot of changes, there's going to be a lot of stresses on you, there's going to be a lot of pressure, and there's going to be some things that happen while you're here in college, while you're really young, that's going to test your character. You know? Not only, you know, how well can I decide things for me, how good a friend can I be for someone else? Can I be for, there for them in a the moment of need? This guy risked his life. A speeding car was coming, you know, to save his friend. So, all joking aside, you know, Think about this. When a friend comes to you and there's a real big pressure on, think, what is the best thing I can do for my friend? Regardless of what I think or what I feel, what do they need? And this is one of the things you're going to learn while you're in college. The next thing you're going to learn is that failure is okay. Now, think back, if any of you have memories, of when you learned to walk or when you learned to ride a bike. 